So let's move to the first presentation by Dr. Shannon Barrett from Astellas. Thank you, everybody. I am Shannon Barrett, and I'm happy to be here on behalf of Astellas to share some recent uh, phase one, two data in late onset Pompe disease. Um, I'd like to thank Tiffany and all the organizers for including us in this, um, in this session. So I'm gonna present two-year safety data and exploratory efficacy, efficacy of AT845, which is the name we have for this gene replacement therapy for late onset Pompe disease, um, a phase one, two open label clinical study, uh, which we call FORTIS. This is very new data, it's exciting. Uh, Dr. Mozafar just presented this at the MDA last week, or last month, sorry. So as a disclaimer, this is an investigational drug and nothing I say should be considered promotional in any way. It's not approved anywhere. So the goal of 845 is to essentially re restore GAA production within the, uh, within the muscle cells. So the potential gene therapy we're looking at, AT845, um, is an AAV-mediated gene therapy, meaning an AAV vector is used to deliver uh, the, uh, the gene product into the, into the cells. So essentially, um, this is, whoop, back. Okay, there. Okay, so essentially there's a fully functional copy of the human GAA gene um, that's inserted into an AAV capsid. It's delivered a one-time IV infusion, um, and that's it. That's the concept of gene therapy. So the key inclusion criteria, and this, these are very general, there's a lot more as you can imagine. This is for adults with a clinical diagnosis um, uh, of Pompeii disease confirmed by genetic testing. Um, everybody who has to be on ERT for the, at least the previous two, two years, so stable and on a stable standard dose of 20 megs per kg every two, every two weeks um, for at least the previous six months. The study endpoints, this is a phase one, two study, so safety is always the primary endpoint in these studies. Um, and you can see some of the things they're looking at, adverse events, serious adverse events, and some of the ones in bold are um, specific typically to gene therapy, so we're keeping an eye on that. The exploratory efficacy is looking at the protein production and expression at week 12 and week 48 through a muscle biopsy. And secondary endpoints, um, which will be familiar to you, is improvement in respiratory function, endurance, um, and functional strength, and quality of life. So just to look at how the study is structured, um, again, these are ERT experienced adults with late onset Pompe disease. Um, the plan is for three cohorts with two to four <coughs> patients per cohort. Um, the first participant um, is dosed, so day one is uh, the, the dose of AT845. And then subsequent to that, there's eight weeks between each of these patients for safety reasons. Um, sub subsequent to the eight weeks, uh, the, the, the subsequent participants will be screened and dosed. And you can see there are three dose levels, dose one, dose two, and dose three. This is also very common in gene therapies to start with a lower dose, see how well it's tolerated, and move to higher doses. Um, the core observation period for the study is one year uh, with a four-year follow-up period. So I'm gonna show you the results for the first, the top four patients here that have had, um, they've completed at least two years of follow-up since their um, original dose. Um, cohort two has, been com has completed enrollment and actually since this uh, data cut, which was January of this year, a six patient has been dosed in the trial. So looking at force vital capacity, I can orient you a little bit to this. So each of the lines represents an individual patient. Um, the, hash, the hash marks on the, on the left side, the, the shaded in, that is, um, that's prior to treatment. So that's when all, those would be their baseline values. Again, these, these people are all um, stable on ERT coming into the, into the study. So the dark line is the day they were dosed, that's day zero. 
Um, and then the arrows, the colored arrows, that was the time that the patients were withdrawn from ERT, and that was a, that's a decision between the, the treating physician and the patient, so um, that decision is made. So you can see after, you know, after, even after the enzyme therapy was, was stopped, um, I don't know why I can't do this, um, they, the patients in general uh, were generally stable up to two years post-dosing, including um, after they withdrew from ERT. The six-minute walk test, again, you see the same um, layout here. Uh, so again, was showed stability up to two years post-dosing um, with three of the four patients that were that withdrew from um, ERT or that were withdrawn from ERT. So shows that ongoing protein production despite not getting ERT anymore. Uh, the patient reported outcomes for fatigue. It was the the patient, the promise patient reported outcome, and you can see again. Um, Going lower is actually better with this one, so you can see there's a, a general trend towards improvement at baseline um, with the fatigue PRO. And then the, the ability to form daily, daily activities, you see similar things that um, the ability to perform daily activities and social participation were stable up to two years post-dose. So for safety, you may have seen there was a little, I should have pointed that out, I meant to. Um, there's, a, it's not there. Why don't I see it? It was on the first slide? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, so you, there, there was an episode of um, one patient of an, uh, was considered a serious adverse event of peripheral sensory neuropathy. So that's what that is. Um, it's in general we're looking at safety now um, p potentially related to therapy but it hasn't been confirmed so that was a serious AE that you can see there um, the increases in ALT and AST are very common in um, gene therapy that's the re liver's reaction to all of the viral vectors that are coming in um, that are usually transient and you're able to manage um, with corticosteroids So the summary and conclusions, there have been five adults, six now actually, with up to um, 148 weeks of safety follow-up, a six participant, oh, there he is, was, it was dosed at the end of January, so they missed this data cut. Um, three of the four participants have completed two years of follow-up, have stopped ERT. Um, the participants remain clinically stable based on an assessment for Pompe disease with the key functional endpoints, safety endpoints, while off ERT for at least 89 um, to 121 weeks. Um, the functional endpoints, including force vital capacity and six minute walk test, are stable. Uh, and the PROs for fatigue and activities were also stable. Safety issues, as I just mentioned, included transient elevated liver transaminases and a serious adverse event of peripheral sensory neuropathy. And with that, we would like to thank um, all of the participants and the investigators in the study. It is an ongoing study um, with six more patients uh, due to be dosed at, at some point in the near future, hopefully. All right, thank you.